will end in a Q and A, right? Uh, before I jump into that, a little bit about my team. Uh, so uh, portfolios are near and dear to my heart. Uh, as, as a design manager, I'm always reviewing them. Uh, I'm a product design manager at LinkedIn, as Vicky mentioned, and I have managed multiple teams at LinkedIn. Currently, I manage a team of designers on the jobs team, which is a part of our LinkedIn's talent product suite. And that's essentially the other side of the hiring marketplace where you seek and apply for jobs uh, on LinkedIn. This is the same. Uh, this is the same product that powers the backend of that job seeking experience. So basically, helping recruiters and hiring managers post a job on LinkedIn and then evaluate applications and then get in touch with you. I've been a hiring manager at LinkedIn for five plus years now and have been actively hiring and building teams, uh, which means. Uh, reviewing a lot of portfolios. Uh, uh, and I've also been a mentor to designers and design managers my entire design life, whether as an IC or as well as a design manager. So this is a little bit about my team. That's the mission of my team, which is helping people hire better and faster. And that's like a marketing video that we have for my team, which is really amazing. Getting into my experience, oh, sorry. Getting into my experience, what does my hiring journey map look like? Uh, we as designers, we all love journey maps. Uh, I've been actively involved in LinkedIn uh, across the entire life cycle of hiring, be it like sharing inputs on the hiring strategy over the last four years and how it's evolved over time. And then right, right to like sourcing and pipelining uh, to really kind of like interviewing. I've also had the opportunity to go on some campus interviews. Uh, where I uh, joined the recruiting team to go to CMU, Rhode Island School of Design, and talk to students uh, right there at school. Uh, so overall, not bragging, uh, overall I've had like 100 plus uh, screening plus interviews and campus interviews under my belt. And with each interview, uh, I've learned a lot from the people that I've interviewed, and I'm grateful that for from every interaction that I've heard, uh, I've had with the people in there. Uh, getting into a little bit of uh, who do I hire for? I hire for product designers at LinkedIn. Product designers are designers who think like a product manager and hold equal responsibility for building the product and partnering up with uh, other teams. They think of business goals along with user problems and pain points and care about iterating and building that product together. Moving into uh, what's, what's a portfolio? Uh, it's, a, it's a compilation, not just of your best work, but also your personality and work ethics. The latter is sometimes missed out in the quest of glitzy images and animations and chips. Also, um, when it comes to a portfolio, it serves multiple purposes, where it can be uh, used for creating a brand, where you showcase yourself as a professional, or even for community engagement, where I know a few designers who use it to connect with other designers and regularly showcase their thoughts and experiences and writings. And of course, the third reason is to be used as a launching pad for yourself for finding employment opportunities. And that's the one area we'll be focusing on today. How do you build a portfolio uh, that helps you get that design job? Starting with the end in mind and focusing on your efforts on building a portfolio that helps you get that job. That single sharp focus that helps you get that attention for recruiters and or hiring managers and gets you that foot in the door. Before we jump into like the five things that I want you to kind of like look out for in uh, portfolios, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, portfolios at different levels. So uh, there are like different types of portfolios when you look at different levels of designers. And what, what do I look for? What do hiring managers look for in those portfolios? When it comes to entry level and junior designers, I'm typically looking for craft and polish. It's a lot to do with interaction design, visual design, making sure you have all uh, the essentials and basics over there. When it comes to evaluating mid to senior level designers, I'm looking, to, uh, looking for some deeper people problems and also how their designs are influencing product strategy and product metrics. And lastly, when it comes to managers, I'm looking for more team growth and impact. How as a manager, have you influenced business? Have you, have you, how have you implied hiring and so on? 
So uh, I pulled out these kind of like screenshots from a ton of like portfolio uh, sites. And uh, there are a ton of resources out there that tell you about the do's and don'ts of building a portfolio, right? From content to templates to inspiration portfolios. There are many beautiful portfolios out there. And uh, I can see why it leads to analysis paralysis, where you just don't move forward from deciding uh, whether to use a builder or whether to hand code your own beautiful website or whether what structure to use. There's a ton of inspiration out there. So in today's presentation, I'd like to focus on those five things that I found to be extremely useful in getting a recruiter's attention to help you move forward from the sourcing pipelining uh, interest phase to actually interviewing with your dream company. I'd like to focus more on the why than the actual what uh, of those five things and share examples. But before we get into that, a little bit of just basics. For any portfolio, just make sure that you are showcasing your best work. I get a lot of questions around, hey, should I include like these, all the work I've done in the last like couple of years, right? Into like everything that uh, makes me a designer. And uh, I would typically say no. Uh, include uh, three or four of your best works. I think uh, best and most recent works. I think that's that's just about enough for a hiring manager or a recruiter to kind of like get through uh, what kind of like designer you are. Make sure you have easy accessible contact information. There are so many times I look at a portfolio, I like it. I'm like, yeah, I need to get in touch with this designer. And then I have to hunt around to look for the contact information. Uh, make sure you have clear case study thumbnail titles. Sometimes the thumbnail titles are misleading or the visual is misleading. I click in and then it turns out to be something else. And does the, that does not like connect and tell the story together. So make sure that uh, those thumb, thumbnail titles are extremely clear. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. I don't know why that popped up on my screen. Give me one minute. Okay, there we go. And uh, Make sure there are no typos or uh, no dead ends or links. Uh, run it through Grammarly, use like uh, a, a content uh, service to make sure there are no typos in your portfolio. Uh, that does not show attention to detail if you have a lot of typos on your portfolio. Make sure you have no dead ends or links that end in nowhere. Usually so there has been times where I've clicked the thumbnail title and it shows me an error page. And I go back, I check out a different project that ends in a dead end. So that's not a great experience for a hiring manager. So make sure there are none of those. If you do have a password at a project level, at a portfolio level, make sure that the recruiters know about it. When you're applying for jobs, make sure like in that form and in the notes, if you're sending a note to a recruiter, make sure you're including the password and making it super clear for them. Overall, for any case study, I think the first thing that I look for, even before getting into the content is, what is your role on the team? Uh, what, who comprises uh, the team? Is it like multiple designers? Are you partnering with product managers, marketeers? Uh, how many engineers do you have on that team? So make sure that's clear. And also the time uh, that you spend on the project, whether it's a three month project, a six month project or a two year project. So if I know that context, I will keep that in mind while reading through your case study. And lastly, just making sure uh, those are relevant projects as I mentioned before, there's clear intention. If you're applying for a job as a product designer, your work that you put on your portfolio is representative of that. And uh, if there are any kind of like hobby projects, they're like sitting in a different part of your portfolio. Before I keep jumping, before I jump in, uh, sorry, uh, okay. I would say also uh, when you start thinking about your portfolio, uh, use a framework. I've created this like quick matrix to kind of like help you get started where uh, think about, hey, what's my project name? What's the platform? What's the business problem platform that you're trying to solve for? Is it a consumer or, or enterprise problem? So that it's, it's clear uh, in, in the portfolio. What problems are you solving? Is it a new product? Is it uh, a redesign? Then talking about the user research or the approach that you're using, thinking about what all am I going to include in this one? Am I going to include flows, wireframes, prototypes, hyperlinked designs? Think about the outcome. I think a lot of designers don't think about the outcome and the learning so much. So think about the outcome. What do you want the project to end on? Uh, do you want to communicate that the product shipped 
or the product got shelved for whatever reason, I think that that's also okay because a lot of time our, our best design work does not get shipped because of reasons beyond our control. And that's all right because as a designer, your job is to design. And uh, if for any reason uh, the product does not get shipped, it's, it's a win for you as well. Um, and then lastly, learnings. Uh, talking about success metrics, talking about how did how was the product received by uh, your users, or what did you learn different? What did you learn from that project? Or if you had to do this project all over again, what would you do differently uh, in in that project? Now jumping into five plus things for your design portfolio, I, I will go through each one of them one on one and keep those questions coming in the chat. Number one being uh, design for an elevator pitch. Now, what does that mean? Our average attention span today is eight seconds, which is one second less than a goldfish. According to research, uh, the average attention span for a human being has dropped from 12 seconds in 2000 to eight seconds in 2013. In this heavy information age, that's the first UX portfolio recommendation I would share. Make sure your portfolio case study is accessible. When, when I mean to say that is think about the pitch that you would make for your case study on your portfolio if you only had one minute to explain it. Or even worse, uh, your hiring manager or recruiter is scrolling to your portfolio case study in a minute and making a decision whether to contact you or not at the end of that eight minute. Now that experience for that hiring manager or recruiter right, starts right from the thumbnail and description of the key study to using the right balance of visual and copy, using different type sizes to get those eyes understand your design problem to quickly solve through, uh, scroll through the design problem, process, solution, and success. Uh, when you do put together your case study, uh, get it tested by friends or family. Can they quickly understand your role, problem to be solved, process, learnings, quickly through scanning your case study in like one to two minutes? Do they find the layout, hierarchy, and visuals engaging to uh, enough to be interested to read more? If the answer to that is no, then maybe you need to kind of like work on that case study to make sure that uh, you can, that a hiring manager, recruiter, or a friend or family person can quickly like scan through your case study in like a couple of minutes. Your portfolio case study is just a trailer to your design approach and your work, and it's not the entire movie. I talk to so many designers who want to do justice to their work and who want to include each and every detail of the project that they worked on. And in the process of doing that, they forget about the real users in this place. The real users are recruiters and hiring managers who have limited time to quickly view your portfolio and get a sense of your work and style. I get a ton of portfolios uh, in, in like a regular like hiring session for one hour with my recruiters. And we are like going through so many portfolios. Um, so make sure that you're including the uh, right amount of details in that portfolio, which gets me interested and uh, gets me or the recruiter to pick up the phone and call you. And they rather have you walk there, help you walk them through their portfolio than read through pages and pages of detailed report on how you went about your project day to day. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, in the sourcing or pipelining phase in any company, recruiters or hiring managers literally go through a ton of CVs and portfolio in a day. And uh, there's everything that you can do to get their attention. Uh, but some high level recommendations would be, the projects that you put in your portfolio are the projects that you will do in the future. So limit your case studies to three or four case, three or four and make sure they're not beyond one to th three years of your experience. Uh, they are, I'll get some portfolios which have more like from experienced designers who have had like six to seven years of experience and they will include work which is like five years older. And at that point, that's a red flag for me because I'm, I'm thinking about like, hey, is there nothing relevant in your last two to three years that you haven't included and you're still kind of like referring to your five years, uh, uh, five years uh, work? Uh, also, uh, make sure that the design of your portfolio is a design exercise uh, by itself. Care deeply about your users, which are recruiters and hiring managers in this space. Make sure your portfolio is clear to navigate, responsive, that there are no dead ends, and, and there's, there's a lot of like clarity in that kind of like interaction design. Number two would be show your design process. 
Now, what I mean by that is, uh, occasionally I would see design case studies with a diagram, design process diagram similar to this, or even more elaborate than this. I have been guilty of doing that as an entry level designer, where I would kind of like go to a site, create a very nice uh, looking design process uh, diagram and plug it into my case study. However, as a design manager, I would rather appreciate your design process as a part of your case study. Tell your free flooring story as, as your case study, rather than like using a static image uh, in, in, in it. I have an example over here that talks about uh, how do you use, uh, how do you use your um, the design process as a part of your case study, where uh, this, care, this example talks about uh, just the context very clearly, it talks about the primary problem, it talks about goals, talks about the design process as a part of that narrative. And it ends in uh, the learnings uh, and, and success uh, metrics from uh, this case study. So make sure uh, you kind of like showcase your, uh, showcase your process as a part of like the sections in the case study. Make it quick, clear, and easy for your users to understand that uh, context, problem, and solution. And end on success metrics and next steps and learnings. Number three, define your brand and what matters to me. What comes to your mind when you see an Apple ad? What makes Apple products so successful? Because they don't sell you a product, you opt into a brand, and it's how that brand has become so powerful and still manages to crush it in a competitor market. The ads are not so much about the features, but how the features will help you help you make your life better. So make and Similar to that, when a hiring manager is looking at a portfolio, they really want to know who you are. They want to know, you, they want to know your brand and what matters to you. Showcase your portfolio as a complete package of how the creator of your portfolio will make the design life richer and better for the next pot potential team. Infuse your personality through your portfolio through the landing page, the case studies, and the about page. The about page is a really powerful tool to communicate your personality brand. Uh, an about page displays a lot of self-awareness uh, and a sense of familiarity. But I have quickly glanced at a designer's about page before jumping into an interview with them so that I have a quick idea of who they are and I get some ideas for a quick icebreaker or some small talk with them. Uh, I've had a designer interview with me and uh, uh, she had on her about page, uh, she had mentioned that uh, she had designed the swimming costumes for Team, B Team USA and that stuck with me. And also there was another time where I was interviewing a designer who had mentioned on their about page that they had chinchillas for pet. I didn't know what a chinchilla was. Uh, so I had to like Google up a little bit, read about what chinchillas are before I step into an interview with them. So infuse your personality in your about page. I see a lot of about page which are like, just kind of like a summary of your work experience, which is already there on your CV, which is already there in your projects. So make your about page a lot more about uh, your personality. An example of which is, uh, goes just beyond icebreakers, about page that tells uh, a designer's life story and mission. For example, uh, this is a snippet from Jacob's uh, about page on his portfolio. Jacob is a designer that I hired in early 2019. Uh, they describe themselves as a designer who brings trust, inclusion, and community-driven uh, problem solving to the forefront of design. I notice connections between their projects uh, and brand and passion on this page. Today, Jacob is a senior designer on my team, designing solutions for ensuring diversity and inclusion in hiring products at LinkedIn, and they are an amazing designer at that. Number four, showcase impact through metrics. Always, always, always care about the dollar amount and success metrics. At LinkedIn, we design, uh, at LinkedIn, we define a quality product as the intersection of these three circles, as you see in the Venn diagram, where a product designer's role is not only responsible for addressing actual user needs and opportunities, but also aligning LinkedIn's uh, company strategy and aiming to drive one or more key business goals. The balance of user values, business goals, when executed well, builds a quality product experience. 
Now, it is a common practice to state the problem that you're trying to solve in your portfolio, but rarely do designers indicate how their design or solution is helping business problems. Uh, as a hiring manager, I would love to know about what the ideal outcome is that you're trying to achieve and how do business goals align with this. Success, success metrics are key to an organization and it's an excellent opportunity to bring in how design plays a role in the business. Including success metrics that align with your business goals helps you showcase your product building mindset and your value as a product designer. Now, uh, let's say uh, your example is a uh, e-commerce website, like in this case, how do you kind of like tie in your design, uh, design solution to the business metric? Like, hey, you're redesigned for a uh, uh, landing page for an e-commerce website. How many users did it get through? So getting into the numbers a little bit, getting under the hoods a little bit. Like in this case, uh, Mudit is a friend and designer. His case study example of his work as Walmart is a shining example of showcasing success metrics, not only in the case study, but also in the project thumbnail. This is a great way to level up the value of your design solution and also illustrate your product design mindset while catching attention from recruiters and hiring managers. Whenever I see numbers, I'm excited. That kind of like adds a lot of value back to your design solution. So the best way to get attention from me as a hiring manager is to include a lot of numbers and uh, connect them back to the design solution. But also uh, not everybody uh, is at that stage in their career where they have worked on a project uh, that has shipped. What if you have worked on a project that did not ship? What if you are still early in your career and you haven't shipped anything? You're still working through a design solution. And also sometimes designers work on design problems where there are no metrics have been because of the nature of the project or customer confidentiality. Also when designers are fairly new or haven't shipped a project, I get questions about what to include in those success metrics. In that case, I would strongly recommend ending the project case study with a qualitative retrospective of your reflections or learnings, which do indicate that iterative end of mind. Uh, like in this case, uh, you see that this is uh, a snapshot from a case study that I saw which did not end in numbers, but it ends in a lot of qualitative learnings. And the, and the title of that section talks, uh, it's very engaging. It's uh, informative section headline. It calls out customer behavior. It calls out the customer sentiment in place of metrics. And it talks about a qualitative success metric in terms of users being finally able to edit files right inside the Encorda app and share folders. So, even if you don't have numbers, make sure that there's some learning. There's a qualitative retrospective to that. Everyone loves designers with the growth mindset. Make sure you do illustrate that in your case studies. And number five, which is my favorite one, design with your words and typefaces. I read this tweet by Tobias, which tickles me a lot and I have seen that to be true. As you start growing into a senior designer, you end up writing a lot more to communicate. And this has become more and more important in a remote work from home situation. where I have spent myself a lot of time just writing a lot of stuff, a lot of asynchronous communication with my team and partners. Design is the only way, and design isn't the only way you design. And most of the times you would do that through words, through various medium like emails, design strategy, Google documents, explaining your solutions when your designs are just not enough. Which brings me to uh, use the, Use the power of words to create that clarity and consistency. Use this philosophy of communication in your portfolio as well. Where you're using uh, the power of clear, consistent copy to create uh, a user-centered experience for your users. Infusing your personality in your case study copy as well as the headers to create that experience. Making sure that the tone seems natural and consistent for all parts of the portfolio. Which brings me to my favorite example, which is uh, part from Vicky's portfolio over here. So a year back, I interviewed Vicky for a design position of LinkedIn. And uh, for whatever reasons, we did not go through with that because we had a hiring freeze at LinkedIn. But the first thing that stuck me about her portfolio in this case study was how she designed using words, using clean and simple language to guide me through her case study. For example, this is describing the problem through the section header and then infusing her personality and voice and tone in the portfolio copy in a similar manner. This style of writing combined with visuals really helped me scan and quickly grasp the core of our case study and help me move her to the next round. Uh, as you see in this, uh, there's a lot of like clear descriptive section titles, 
is she quickly establishes her role and approach the project through her disclaimer. There's a very natural style of writing as well. So make sure you don't disregard copy and content writing. Content writing is an equally important part of designing. But I want to address this question about uh, what do you do with uh, career changer portfolios? I do get a lot of uh, questions. I have a bunch of mentees uh, who are coming from a non-design background who haven't gone to design school and they are basically pivoting their career. At that time, uh, what is the right story to talk about your career? How do you kind of like use your past work? Many of you are career changes coming from a different discipline and wanting to move into user experience design. Now career changer portfolio will always have that extra layer of meaning because they have that extra layer of meaning. Many of you are transitioning, might be a little conflicted about how do you tell your story without your work experience and sound, without kind of like bringing in your work experience, should you bring in your work experience, should you not bring in your past work experience? So I would say that you don't have to underplay your actual experience. Uh, chances are the skills that you learned in your previous jobs or previous roles would be equally uh, relevant in a design job. And sometimes it just needs like tweaking, uh, the, tweaking the experience that you had before. I was chatting with a mentee of mine, uh, Kate, and uh, we were talking about she's pivoting from a business development manager to a user experience designer. And we were talking about uh, how could she use relevant, uh, her relevant experience as a business development manager, basically getting into the order of uh, understanding the business, uh, doing a lot, whole, lot of stakeholder uh, expectation management and how it was completely relevant to what she would do in a UX design role as well. So I would say use, you take the relevant parts of your uh, previous experience and find a way to leverage them in your UX design portfolio or when you're talking about your past work experience in your design interviews. And uh, what if you don't have the experience at all and need that experience? I do get a lot of uh, uh, questions from designers who send me a, a redesign of a Spotify page or a redesign of email. Uh, and I get questions around, Hey, should I be kind of like uh, doing these concept projects uh, to get that experience? Now, while concept projects are great, they are done in a silo. You are the user, you are the designer, you're not working with any team. And I would always, always, always appreciate a uh, real life, real world project over a concept project. And a way to do that is um, if it's a viable option for you, rather than like spending time on a concept project, volunteer your time. This could be a paid internship, unpaid internship. It could be volunteering as a designer along with uh, under the job in the adjacent space. Uh, you could uh, join a hackathon, which gives you an, which gives you an opportunity to do work with uh, uh, engineer, product manager as the way you would do in, uh, in, in real life. Reach out on LinkedIn and see if any other engineers or designers are interest, interested in helping you out. You could try and showcase your ability to think, uh, to adapt by thinking about COVID related prompts as well. Whatever you do, uh, make sure you're kind of like creating that brand for yourself, creating that marketing from yourself. Share it on social media. LinkedIn is a great place uh, for people to see all these unique ideas and designs that are being generated by posting. And it will only increase uh, any sort of chance for firms and hiring managers to see your work. Now, uh, coming towards the end, uh, I do find a lot of designers obsessing over portfolios and end up comparing portfolios with others out there. Uh, there, I hear so many designers come to me be like, hey, my design, my portfolio is not so good looking, uh, yada, yada, yada. At that point, I would say, you are your own special person and it's better to ship your portfolio uh, faster and earlier than kind of like keep holding it close to your chest. After all, all portfolios have one single focus is to tell your story and your accomplishments. Uh, and each of your stories is unique and different from others. And do keep in mind that the portfolio is just one of the pieces of your hiring journey, whereas you are the total package. Before I end, uh, just kind of like summarizing through the uh, for, uh, presentation a little bit, don't forget your basics. Design for an elevator pitch where you can quickly scan through uh, your, uh, your case study in a couple of minutes. Illustrate your design process as a part of your case study instead of 
plugging in a static image, uh, which talks about your design process, tell your story, create your brand through your about page, showcase your impact through metrics or qualitative learnings, uh, always uh, have that growth mindset to your portfolio. And last but not the least, design with your words. Make sure that content design and storytelling narrative is an equal and strong part of your design uh, portfolio case study. With that, uh, I will thank all of you and I will open it up for questions. Yay, thank you so much. That was so thorough. I don't know about y'all, but like, I was like, I have learned so much and um, it would be really awesome if we could have like access to this, like um, slides or something. Cause I feel like that is super like that, it has like, it's kind of like a gold mine of all of this stuff. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. Um, and we're so excited because we do have questions here and, and make sure everyone, if you have more questions, um, add it into the chat. We'll do our best to, um, we'll do our best to like prioritize them and make sure that we get through all of them during this time. Um, so our first question is from Kendall and Kendall asks, my material advisor for the boot camp. Um, I was in suggested that I created two to three case studies and one to two projects. She mentioned projects are shorter in length. So if the reader did not want to read through the entire case study, um, that option is there. This is the first time I've heard of this. So I'm curious to know if this is a common practice. So um, that's interesting. I haven't heard that before. Um, are the projects different from your case studies or are they a part of the case study itself? Um, sorry, I can yeah. speak directly if, if that's okay. <laughs> a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so she just suggested that I do one to two projects and she didn't really explain too much about it. She just said that they were like smaller in length and, or shorter in length. Um, and she just suggested that if, you know, the hiring manager or the recruiter didn't want to read through an entire case study, they could, I don't know. It, it, I asked my instructor as well and he said he didn't know, but I'm just curious to know if you've seen it. <laughs> So I haven't seen anything like that. I've seen like case studies, uh, which are kindly kind of like shorter. And sometimes in the case, at the end of the case study, uh, designers would include like a link, which takes me to like a medium blog, which kind of like has like more details about the entire thing. But I haven't seen like uh, case studies and projects together. Typically I would see your case studies on your portfolio to be like a shorter narrative of the project. And then if you, as you move through the interview uh, process, and then you come in uh, to interview, I would rather like have you create a deck, which kind of like gets into a more deeper narrative. And that's, that's something that you present yourself. So yeah, the portfolio versus uh, the case study versus projects is, is, is new. I would say just focus on like those three to four case studies, which are uh, not super short, not super like long, but kind of like right amount of uh, information and visuals that gets my attention. And I want to like pick up the phone and chat with you and get to know a lot more than that. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you for asking. Awesome, and I think Sonia has their hand up. So if you want to unmute yourself, um, feel free to uh, ask a question. Okay, thank you. Um, I have dyslexia. So I'm wondering from my perspective, uh, if a video or if something other than just typing out all this information might be an alternative, because I know that we're, as part of our jobs, we're also responsible for showing, not just telling that we understand about accessibility. And I appreciate okay. very much that not only did you have the live transcript today, but that you asked me. So whether or not, you know, it's something that's being asked, the thought is there that this is inclusive and I appreciate that. So thank you for that. Awesome. Sounds good. So um, I'm really glad to um, that we have this feature. So that's super great. Um, so do you have do you have a preference? Have you had like um, portfolios that did showcase like video? Uh, yeah, there have been designers have like different use different means to communicate. So there have been videos. There have been gifs. Uh, uh, there have been links that connect to like an external video as well everything that can like help you get that attention uh, and help you kind of like tell your story. So I always say uh, the story is always important as long as you can use any medium, whether it's like using video, copy, the right amount of like visuals to tell your story. I think anything that works, uh, works for a hiring manager as well. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And also to know too, that video is like, you know, less common. I'm sure that that could help um, really help like you stand mm -hmm. out as well, Sonia. So that is an awesome question. Um, so the next question that we have is from Yashvi and they ask, are password protected case studies disappointing for hiring managers? Uh, they are disappointing if uh, I don't have the portfolio, uh, if I don't have the password, sorry. So uh, make sure that you, whenever you're like working with a recruiter, whenever you're applying for a job, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of like uh, job uh, application forms will have this text field that says like, hey, this plug in your portfolio uh, URL over here. And if you want to share any additional details, make sure you plug in your password in that. So when it comes to the recruiter and hiring managers, uh, we do have that portfolio and we are able to access that portfolio case study. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So Lauren asks, um, I have experience as a physical product designer, and I'm wondering whether to include some projects in my portfolio from my work in that realm or to just make it 100% UX related. My previous projects have a lot of UX related aspects. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it's okay to showcase that side of me. And they say, thank you. I would say, yes, absolutely. I think uh, being an industrial or physical product designer is essentially the, the design process is always the same. It's about, uh, uh, it's about doing user research. It's about shipping a product, going through the process of, uh, of building that product. So I would say definitely do include that. But uh, if that work is uh, slightly older than the current digital work, then I would like use that, uh, like that right amount of hierarchy. So even as you kind of like have your project laid out on your portfolio page, making sure the digital, port digital product uh, case studies are higher up than the physical uh, product ones. Right, that makes sense. Um, I think, yeah, like you're saying too, like that, like, make use of that past experience and like show mm -hmm. it off because I definitely think that there's a lot of overlap as well. So awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, Vandana asks, are there any certain crucial headings to be included within the portfolio as in background, design process and all, or does that, like how much does that matter? So uh, I would say uh, use the right words uh, in context of the case study. So I uh, illustrated Vicky's example. Vicky did not, use uh, standard words as background or process. And she used like the user problem to illustrate that. So I would say definitely using the right title in context of a case study. If like for across your case study, if you have used like these standardized kind of like titles, like a background design process, then making sure you stick to that across your case studies. Or if you're using a no, more natural style of writing, then, um, then using, uh, that one across your portfolio case studies. So I'd say no real hard and fast rule over there. Use the right copy that works best for the context of your project. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. And I think too, like Vicky's portfolio did a good job of like taking advantage of that space. So it's like, mm -hmm. what is it, what is going to make a recruiter or a hiring manager want to read forward? So I think that is a definitely a really um, awesome answer. Um, and Niadi asks, I am a visual communication designer and I want to switch mm -hmm. to UX design. And I was thinking of putting four to five of my best works, but only one case study. Do you think that will work or do you have any suggestions? So, uh, so what I'm understanding from this question is four to five best works is uh, a visual walkthrough uh, of the her work. And a case mm -hmm. study is kind of like getting uh, into the details of the design process. Would that be right? Uh, I don't know who asked that question. Is that correct, Niadi? If you can pitch in too, if you if you wanted to clarify any of that. Yeah. I think Niadi Shah, you can okay. unmute yourself. Like, looks like they're here, but they, I, mean, I don't. Okay, I, I, I can like give it a stab based on like just my understanding of the question. So I do see visual designer portfolios, uh, which essentially would be uh, just a list of just, just like screenshot, just kind of like visuals after visuals. At that point, it makes it harder for me to understand the story behind uh, the visuals. So even if you do have, uh, only if you do have experience as a visual designer, graphic designer, uh, make sure as 
you include the context of that. Make sure they include the context of the graphic design, whether it's a redesign, whether it's like an existing brand design uh, or so on. So I would say, make sure uh, you do include case studies, tell the story. Uh, just seeing a page with just visuals does not excite me, does not tell me the story or does not like help me understand how do you work with other people? How did you create these visuals? Were you a part of a team? Were you doing them by yourself? So mm -hmm. make sure you include all those details in there. Yeah, totally. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I think um, a pattern in some questions that we have been getting is like, if they are or were a designer of some kind um, in their past experience, if they should be adding you know, that into the portfolio. And I feel like you um, touched on it when you were saying like, you know, it's good to showcase like your design thinking. Um, but like you said, right, having the UX um, design projects being higher in the hierarchy, like, and, you know, making sure that they're thorough is, um, is, you know, really important. Um, is there Absolutely. any other way um, or any other tips or tricks that you have um, when a designer is particularly introducing themselves as someone that used to do another type of design? Um, is that something um, that's crucial to add in like the about page? Do you recommend them like flaunting kind of that past experience in their narrative? Uh, yes, I would say definitely uh, include that in your about page because I would always go to the about page before before mm -hmm. going to any case, but that, that's me. I'll go to the about page, get to know a little bit about the person, their background before jumping into the case study so that I have that context. Right. Uh, without which it's, it's sometimes like difficult to relate to those uh, case studies. So yeah, use the about page to include like that past information, flaunt about uh, any awards that you have had, any any past experience that is relevant uh, uh, to the UX design job that you're looking for. So using that as your platform. Right. Sweet, that's awesome. Um, so Habiba has a very uh, interesting question. Um, they ask, what if I designed a website and it shipped, but the develop developer didn't follow the design and it ended up looking different than they intended? Is it okay not to include the link to the live ship product or is it better for them to add it anyway? So a question that comes to my mind is why? Why did that happen? And I think that that's all right. That happens as a part of uh, a product development process that sometimes the designs you build are not executed in the same way because of any kind of reasons. They might be like, hey, we wanted to like, get this out of the door really fast. So we built a very lightweight version or maybe the back end did not support or our front end did not have that technology to make these animations work. I think at that point, I would be interested in the why. And I would definitely say, do include it in your case study. That shows me a great kind of like partnership or a collaboration. And do include the reasons why it does not look the same. Uh, as a person building products in real life, we understand that sometimes designs will not be 100% there. But understanding why it did not uh, work the same way, uh, why it did not get built the same way is important to me. And then including a retrospective about what would you do differently the second time? I think if, you, if, you, if you're interviewing with me with that example, I would be really curious to know about what tips and tricks did you use to convince your engineer to build that? And they, why did they not build it as per the spec? And what are your learnings from that, uh, from that collaboration? Yeah, I think that is so, that is such a interesting, like that's such a good point because I feel like it's an opportunity to like, you know, having a product that ship is awesome, but obviously if it's not fantastic, like you can show like, okay, so I learned that I have to like, you know, maybe it was like not enough time to communicate with the developer. Like maybe um, the, you know, there's like, there's like definitely learnings from that. So a hundred percent, I totally agree with that. Okay. So um, now we have- I would, add, I would add a little bit to that. I get this question a lot from entry-level designers that, hey, I've worked on this project for like a couple of months and my company decided not to build this product at all, which means I have failed as a designer. And I get that over and over again. And at that point, I, I want to tell people that, uh, no, you have not failed as a designer because you build out designs. Designs are to quickly understand how that design would be in real life. You've got it tested. You had a prototype probably, and the company decided not to build that for whatever reasons, because it did not strike very well with the users, did not help us get that revenue. At that point, what you have done is your designs have saved the company from a huge amount of dollars that they would spend having 10 engineers build that product and then go to market and have that product fail. 
and you've, you've helped them. Your designs have helped that identify even earlier. So that's a huge win for you that you have helped the, the, the company save that money. And uh, no way is it a failure that your designs do not get shipped. Yeah, no, absolutely. I feel like there's some stuff that you just can't control. So just like, again, like documenting the learning experience, mm -hmm. I think like a pattern that I'm hearing, which is really awesome. Um, so I think we're gonna go to our final two questions um, from Natalia. Natalia asks, if you worked with a lead or senior product designer on a project, how do you go about explaining that it was a joint design process with them? Should I just explain who was on the team or go more in depth? Um, I'm assuming too, like on the specific thing that you worked on. I would definitely include that uh, on, on the top of your uh, project history, talking about the team. And then I do see examples where um, designers would specifically call out that, hey, I worked on the research and interaction design, but as a senior designer worked on the execution or vice versa. So I would definitely call that out uh, in, in that case study title or the top section itself. And then as you kind of like take me to the narrative, now that's in the back of my mind. I'm always keeping that in the back of mind when I have uh, initially did that. Even right. as you go through the case study, if there are like specific parts uh, that you partner up with the designer and uh, you have like equal responsibility, calling that out uh, proactively. Yeah, awesome. That, that totally makes sense. Um, and now going into our one of our last questions, I believe, um, Angel asks, I have heard it is better not to showcase too much of the research process or lo-fi prototypes. If this is true, what are the key points that recruiters want to take away from the process that you had? So um, I would say make strike the right balance. Um, don't drag me through all the details of your research. Uh, tell me about the insights and learnings and the nuggets of that research instead of taking me through, these were the 10 sessions that we did and each of the sessions, this is what every person said. No, I don't want to like dig through that in my first uh, first time I'm reading through a case study. I'd rather have you talk through it when, I, you, when I, you come in on site or when I'm interviewing you. So for research, at least like uh, talk about the research uh, process, the methodology, uh, the nuggets of information, the insights that you had, and just what were your learnings and what, how are you applying them back into the product? And when it comes to lo-fi um, iterations, designers will typically go through iterative loop. They will have like four or five different explorations before they land on the final one. In that case, I would say, instead of going through all of those four or five iterations, take one, which was kind of closer to the uh, end, um, end solution, uh, and tell me about why did you not pick one, this one? Or why have, why did you pick the final solution over the others? I think that reasoning is more important to me. I want to like see that uh, reasoning instead of just laying out all the options out there. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I think um, something that I definitely personally struggle with is just being more concise and like making, like rem remembering, like, like you said, like, the attention span is very low. So you have to optimize for like the best information possible. Um, so that is awesome advice. And um, we are going to be wrapping up our event now. So if you have any other questions, I'm sure uh, Annie Rudo would like love to just connect with you Absolutely. on LinkedIn. Um, it makes sure to like to connect with us, like follow us on LinkedIn if you haven't already on Instagram as well. Um, and also we are so excited to hear um, from you all, what your takeaways were. Um, I, I'm excited to see those on LinkedIn. And I can't believe too, that we had this opportunity with you. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday with us. And Anuruta, thank you so much for that amazing presentation. I'm so excited. And this video will be up, this recording will be up on our YouTube channel. So make sure to check it out. Um, if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. Um, and yes, so we'll see you at our next event. Keep, um, keep us, um, on your, if you haven't already go to our website and, uh, sign up for our newsletter because our newsletter will be, um, showcasing all of the different future events. But with that, thank you so much honey, for this. It's, it's been amazing. And thank you so much everyone for being here. Thank you students of, uh, UX design for hosting me. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, uh, Ricky. Thank you, Donnie. It's great chatting with all of you and please do connect with me. I dropped in my uh, email address in the chat because that you require to connect that, that with me. That's akadam at linkedin.com and looking forward to getting more questions from all of you. So keep them coming.
Awesome. Thank you. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody. Enjoy, be safe, and have fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we should have like music to like end things. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, don't you all have like a playlist already? Oh, we do. We, we do have a playlist on Spotify. That's a good idea. Definitely think that that's, a, that's something that we should do. Um, I use that for my meetings. So I have a lo-fi playlist, like, uh, which is like work positive. It has no explicit words or anything. Yeah. It's like lo-fi just playing in the background. I use that for my workshops and like my meetings as people they keep coming in. Yeah, love that. We're going, let's, let's try that for next time. Um, so that would be fantastic. Um, yeah, but that we should was, promote that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Cause like, I know, I think, did Rohan start it? Was he yeah, there? he did. Yeah, I feel like we should make use of that because that it would be so fun. Um, sounds good. I think we should just wrap up with the people who are still here. Um, If you'd like, um, we can start also our own, um, yeah. So we'll we'll close the meeting and um, we'll have um, a specific meeting just to thank you. Um, and so um, watch out, we'll just send you something I think That's on LinkedIn. Yeah, all right. Bye. You have a great weekend. Thank bye. you, bye-bye.